he just he just got his ass knocked out. Now I got to admit, um, I'm not too high on Edgar Belanga, but what he just did to Patrick McCrory, McCrory of Ireland, one of my countrymen. If you don't know, I I identify as uh, half black, half Irish, and full blooded Chicano. In round number six, it redeemed him for the fight. That means now he did elbow. There was a low blow, both by Berlanga, Edgar the cannibal, because he is a cannibal. Remember, he tried to bite that dude, or he did bite him, and then Top Rank released him shortly after. I'm not sure if it was because of the bite or whatever, but uh, he's a bit of a head case. Now, there's rumors circulating, and Eddie Hearn has said that uh, Berlanga is in the mix for a potential Canelo fight. I don't want to see that shit. Canelo better not fight him. Well, I'm going to shit all over that event. Canelo need to fight David Benavidez or Terrence Crawford. Both of them this year. That's it. That's it. Or the winner of Bevo versus Berta BF. One of those three. And then I'll settle for maybe a Munguia, but not Edgar Belenga. Jamal Charlo, okay, yeah. But the guy still has a way to go. What are they talking about? I mean, I can't say that. Both Munguia and Charlo. I mean, you know, despite Charlo's layoff, he needs to drop that WBC 160-pound title. The WBC makes me sick, like, for real, for real. I don't know what type of bullshit they on, but I, I do know what they're on. They're scared. Look at this knockout. Now, that was the one that rung his bell. He was already done right there, and then put him to sleep. Put him down. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Look at this shit. And it stung him like bang. So luckily for Berlanga, this is the first knockout he's had since 2020. He needed this. He needed this. He went on that mad streak of knocking everyone out in one round. And then as he stepped up in competition, Damon Nicholson... Cosel, Cosetis, Steve Rose, Romer and Gulo, Jason Quigley, you know, couldn't stop him. So good for him. Even though when it comes to the top dogs at 168 pounds, for example, let's go look at it. Um, the Munguia fight would be fun if Canelo don't fight him. Uh, David Morrell, yeah, I think David Morrell would beat him, but that's, you know, he's a PBC fighter, don't see it happening. Christian Mbali. You know, as you can see, uh, Belang is right down here. Maybe they can match him up with Sergey Derevchenko. See what he's doing. If he's still kicking around out there, Pacheco will probably beat him. You know what? I wouldn't mind the Derevchenko fight. To be honest, if he can't get Munguia, Shiskin's not that good. Let me see. Did I? When the last time I saw him fight? I wasn't really high on him when I last saw him fight. If I remember. What card was this? I don't remember. I just don't think I was high on him. Anyway, take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. We're waiting for the uh, post-fight interview to see um, if Berlanga is going to call out anybody. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Oh, yeah. He's now the WBA uh, mandatory for Canelo. Will they now order it? Highly unlikely. He's standing by with Chris Maddox. Well, Edgar, congratulations. How good did it feel to get that knockout? Oh, it feels amazing. First and foremost, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this victory. I want to thank Matchroom. I want to thank the fucking GOAT and promotional game, Eddie Hearns. I want to thank my team, Team Belanga, Keith Conley, Edgar Belanga Sr., Mark Wright, Ray Fright, Johnny Boy, Memo. I want to thank my team, man, my beautiful wife, uh, my son, you know, just the team, I, I feel amazing, I'm great, it feels great to be back, you know, catching a, a live body, I feel amazing. You know, you were undefeated, won your last five fights, but they all went the distance. How important was it for you to get that stoppage? 
Oh, it was super important. You know, I told Kaji McCory, I said, I was losing sleep over this fight with him because people don't understand. Irish motherfuckers are strong, man. And he's undefeated. And he came to fight. You know, he traveled from another country without his family, with his family, you know? I know it was tough, and he put on one of his, his uh, posts, Cinderella Man. You know, so I knew deep down in my heart they was coming to fight. Um, I, I prep very well. What was your mindset in the early rounds? Because there wasn't... Well, he loses sleep over Pat Patrick McCrory? That ain't a good sign. Yeah, uh, well, the first thing I told my coach was, I want to, you know, see what he's getting, what, he's, what, he's, what I'm receiving, you know, so I can catch his timing. I feel like people are so scared. Not scared, but they intimidated with my power, so I didn't want to just be an um, offensive fighter, you know. I'm learning how to put my defense before anything, check him out, and then I start landing punches. So what changed for you in the sixth round of this fight? What were you seeing, and how were you able to get the stoppage? Um, I seen the br breakdown, you know. I knew already I was breaking him down little by little. I didn't, he's a veteran. I didn't want to go crazy until I knew I had him hurt, and that's exactly what I did. Is it a confidence boost for you, you know, getting a stoppage after everybody was wondering where did that power go? Um, not really, you know, I knew it was there. I just got to understand that nobody's going to go out in the first round, so I got to set it up. How important was it for you to come into this fight fully healthy, to have a second training camp with Mark Farid? How important was that for you? Amazing, man. Um, I trained damn near almost six months for this guy. You know, I worked very hard. But it wasn't really towards him. It was just myself, you know, building myself back up to who I am. You are now the mandatory challenger for the belt that's held by Canelo Alvarez. Do you believe you earned a shot at Canelo Alvarez tonight? What y'all think? Let me know, fans. Let me know. Puerto Rico! Don't call on Puerto Rico. Nah. You feel you're ready for that type of fight? A thousand percent. Look at Eddie right there. He's going to make it happen. Congratulations, Edgar. Thank you. Eddie, we'll turn to you. You said this man needed a... He better not... Canelo better not fight no fucking Belanga. You know, I mean... We know one of the most exciting fires. We want to thank everybody in Orlando for coming out and showing him the support here tonight. It was incredible, and that's exactly what he needed. The statement performance. He's mandatory now for Canelo Alvarez's title. He's number one with the WBA. It's only a matter of time. Canelo Alvarez, the greatest fighter in the sport. He wants to be and challenge himself against the greatest fighters in the sport. That's, that's Puerto right, Rico like against Mexico. That will be a huge him, event. Edgar Belanga against Canelo Alvarez. And listen, maybe there is one more. But I tell you now, if the call came, he wouldn't back down. He wouldn't run around the ring to try and survive for 12 rounds. He'd stand and fight with Canelo Alvarez. He'd give the fans a great, great fight. And that's what people want to see. Edgar? You know, I think right now boxing, boxing needs that. They need a Puerto Rican star versus a, Me a Mexican star. That's what boxing needs. That'll be the biggest fighter this year. Eddie, one more thing. You are, I'm sure, WhatsApp buddies with Canelo, text buddies with Canelo. How realistic do you think it is that we see Edgar Berlang and Canelo dance in May? Listen, it, you know, Canelo Alvarez will fight anybody. I promise you that. Benavidez, Charlo, Munguia, Berlanga. But I know he wants to give the fans real fights. He wants to fight people that come to fight. Here he's got a young contender with plenty of heart, plenty of power that will stand in front of him and fight him. And that's why it will be a great fight. May or September, I believe you will see Canelo Alvarez against Edgar Belanga this year. All right, we're looking forward to that. Edgar, congratulations. Guys, throw it back to you. All right, well, so no concrete answers. I, I don't know. You know, we're going to have to see because, uh, 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 you know, Canelo's supposed to fight on May the 4th. It's February the 24th. You see what I'm saying? So it's got about, what, nine weeks or so? You know, to get to get something going. But that being said, uh, I'm interested to see who he's going to fight next. If it's not Canelo, but they got to step it up in the competition. So I already said the names. Um, if it's not going to be Munguia, you know, maybe they can do Beck the Bully. You know, that'd be a good test for him. See so what's going with Shishkin. Uh, who else? Sergei Dravinchenko. Gongora. You know, Umbali. Mumbali. Pacheco, there's fights out there. I'm talking about some in the political stable that can be made. But let me get on over to UFC. It's a huge fight between your, your uh, Rodriguez and uh, uh, Brian Ortega. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to T Street Controversy with 5v360.